Let's just do it quickly. Let's say the ex everything is exactly the same. The problem's the same. The data is the same. But now, instead of having a 99%, 95%, let's do a 99% confidence interval. So basically, you whip out your formula, which is this really simple formula, an illogical formula. The x bar is still 20.5. The sigma is still 2. The n is still 100. The only question is, what's the z going to be when it's 99%? So you make the following little picture, which you don't really have to make, because really the picture simply helps you figure out the piece at the end. And if this is 99%, what is the piece at the end? Well, this has got to be the missing 1% divided by 2, which is 0 0.005. So 0, 0, 0050. Because course, remember, the z table is written to four decimal places. So can somebody quickly go to the back of the negative z table, and this time, instead of looking up 0 0.025, look up 0 0 0.005, except now you're not going to find it exactly there. You've got to pick the closest of the two numbers. Laurie, you're trying it again. What do you got? Either one. Okay, so there are three answers you can put down, and all will be right. Negative 2.57, or what's equally close, negative 2.58. And if you, technically, if you split the difference between them, you'll probably get a better answer, which is what? Negative 2.575. So any one of these three answers will be acceptable. You put down minus, let's say, 2.58. And then you plug it in. You know, this times this. One thing I should point out to you in the remaining, since I'm over time, make sure, this is a very common mistake, make sure you do this calculation first and then add the whole thing to the x bar. Don't do x bar plus z and then multiply it by the sigma. That will give you the wrong answer. So you've got to do this, the whole, this whole calculation first and add it to the 20.5, then subtract it from the 20.5. And we're going to